Okay, so before I get into this, I kind of want to just <laughs> talk about this. This is my, this is like the first workflow that I started building in Roost when we, um, and I, was, I spent about four months putting it all together. Um, we use Log Me In Rescue for most of our support sessions and the tickets that come in from log me in one, two, three. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta minimize those comments or I'm gonna be laughing. Um, so the tickets that come in from the LMI rescue account for about 50% of our ticket volume. Um, and the goal here is, well, normally when a technician handles an LMI session, uh, you know, they go through, they help the computer, uh, they help the end user, they remote it in their computer, they fix a problem, and then they got to spend the next five minutes filling out a ticket. Um, so my goal here was to get that admin time cost per LMI session down to zero, which is what I've done here. Um, so the workflow, uh, I have got a listener on here that listens to some callback data that gets posted from LMI whenever a session is picked up by a technician. And once that happens, I go, uh, I go ahead and I get the technician from manage. I get the contact from manage. If there is no contact, I set some variables because that's going to be important later. Um, if I do get the contact, I find the company that the contact's a part of. I get all of the agreements for that company. And then I will go and I will create a ticket. I do some checks to make sure that the summary that I'm creating the ticket with is like within the length limitations of ConnectWise. And then after I've created a ticket, um, I enter into a holding pattern. Uh, LMI, uh, they're, not, they're not the greatest API. Uh, when I went to design, when I first went to build this uh, in their API docs, they say that they have callback data on session pickup and callback data on session close but the callback on session uh, the callback data on session close doesn't really work it literally only happens if the tech like if the technician closes the session when the end user closes it nothing happens uh, so what i do is i check the api and see if my session is still in their api every 30 seconds and i stay here in this loop until the session is over once it's over, I check and see if I can get the chat logs for the LMI session. Um, and we exit that loop and come over to my main body of automation, where once I have the chat logs for the LMI session, I generate notes, um, like, a, like a, a summary of what the technician did to help the user, what the problem was. Um, I also have a sub workflow that I copied from The Rock and made my own modifications to, to do, um, uh, ticket categorization, where I set my type, subtype, and items automatically. Uh, um, and then right at about that point, if the end user, when they created the LMI session, didn't give us a good contact, um, I actually pause all the ticket automation and I send a message to the end user via my chatbot in Microsoft Teams. So I deliver them an, adap an adaptive card and say, hey, a ticket's been created for your LMI session. Um, the ticket automation is paused until you access the ticket and update it with a valid contact. And then I enter a holding pattern and I check the ticket every so every 30 seconds and see if there's a contact on it. Um, once it does have a contact, I go, uh, then I proceed and I will take a look at the chat logs. I feed that into the, uh, into open AI and I generate time entry notes for the technician. And I impersonate the technician when I generate the time entry notes. And I used a timestamp from the beginning of the LMI session and the timestamp from the end of the LMI session to make that time entry. Um, and then once that's done, I send a final adaptive card um, to the technician to let them know that everything's done. Um, and then back with like the contact stuff, I've got a timeout of an hour on that. If the technician fails to update the ticket with a contact, it'll send a card to the technician and to management saying, hey, this technician failed to uh, update the ticket within the period of time. Um, so I kind of rushed through that, um, but I can pull up a, an example of a ticket here. Um, I copied this over, but normally this would all be done by our Roost API member. Um, so this is an example of an LMI session ticket. And if I scroll down here, down to the bottom, uh, we can see that First, the information that gets post uh, that that gets posted from LMI gets logged to the ticket. Uh, this is actually the problem description that the user provided, and then here's our chat logs. 
So you can see here with this chat log, uh, this technician was talking with the individual about an issue with their scanner. Um, and then of course we have the summary uh, afterwards where the support session was initiated by, uh, I redacted some information out of here, but um, it goes through and it talks about what the technician did. Um, it's a really good summary. Uh, then it lets us know that the ticket has been automatically categorized and we can actually see a where the type, the subtype, and the items have been uh, correctly selected. Uh, this is a really big problem for me because the way, I mean, when I first designed this, the way that the uh, ROCKS workflow was doing it didn't account for people who had really large type, subtype, item associations. Like if you pull my association CSV out of manage, I think it's like 26,000 tokens long. Uh, so that's why I ended up having to build my own sub workflow to do the ticket categorization, which most of that's happening right here. I actually break it down into three separate queries to open AI to determine that. Um, uh, what else? Oh, and then I, I can't show you the actual cards in Teams because they've got sensitive information in them, but I did take some screenshots here and censor the information. Um, so like... This one right here uh, would be the card that the technician would receive once their LMI session, or once the ticket for their LMI session has been completed. Um, this is an example of the card that a technician would get if, uh, if a contact, like there wasn't a valid contact with the LMI session began. And then this one down here is the card that gets sent to the technician and to management if they fail to update the ticket within an hour with a valid contact. Um, so yeah, that is my, uh, that's my workflow. Um, I, w I did the math on this and based on the average salary, we play our help desk, um, by removing admin time from this, I think we're saving between 50 to $60,000 a year on paper. 